So this, instead of being a pencil, is going to be the arrow. It's not every day you see a student leading the class. Once you re-tear it, it's going to show you a different way. But here at the Life School in Atlanta... Count with Gracie! Nine! Students are on their feet, learning, laughing, and enjoying their time in school. We've passed the age of the sort of factory, cookie-cutter preparation of our children. Michaela Streeter and Cabral Mohammed started the Life School to keep students from experiencing education the way they did. My classmates were much more confident and comfortable launching into these really complicated problems. And for me, I was like, well, where's the worksheet? What are the step-by-step -step instructions? But at this school, instructions, textbooks, and test scores don't dictate success. Class is about learning with joy and empathy and learning how to work on a team. Kids aren't separated by age, but ability. And students can suggest what they want to study. Students who produce original music albums, who started businesses and earned thousands of dollars. Uh, I mean, there's students who publish novels. I mean, it really runs the gamut. As a father himself, Cabral wanted to create a space where he could be involved. My driving force here. <laughs> My son, uh, he's six. Um, and actually, I guess what this space has meant for me and for a lot of uh, like-minded parents um, was just having access to our children uh, in a way that a normal school setting, it, it usually they do a lot of work to separate children from their parents. He says this space gives his son the freedom to learn social and emotional skills he'll need his entire life. Hi. What's your name? Sura. Sura. So this is Sura. And studies show this setting works. Middle schoolers studying science in a project-based setting in California tested 11 percentage points better than their peers in traditional lecture-style classes. And second graders in Michigan who learned in project-based settings demonstrated five to six more months of social studies learning and two to three more months of reading comprehension than peers in traditional classes. Students are also less likely to drop out of these schools and more likely to attend college. It's a model Michaela says can help all students. You think, oh, well, smart kids or good kids can learn by listening. It's really those other kids that need to run around or something, but that's not the case. If you take a kid that is being successful in a traditional environment and put them in a, an environment that's more project-based, more hands-on and flexible, they will flourish even more. Of course, these small schools cost money to open and run, but that's why Michaela and Cabral hope the example they're setting will get the attention of community leaders and lawmakers to extend more grants and state and federal money to schools like theirs. Because those actions today could be the foundation for the generation of tomorrow to flourish. When you think about the people who are most successful in life, they're people who can think flexibly, who can think in an agile way. We want our students to embrace the nuance, embrace spaces for creativity, and take that into the real world, have that capacity, because that's really what leads to success.